Hello there carpologists, today you join me at Linear Fisheries and more specifically I'm going to be making my way over the road to Braze Nose 1 where Tom Maker is currently on a session on there and he's just had one as well so I'm going to go around and film that as well. He's been having an absolutely blind in January and it's carried on the same way into February so I'm going to go around and see exactly what he's been doing to make his uh, start to his winter campaign this year so successful. And there he is, another cold water 30 pounder. And it's looking like February is carrying on where January left off. I had a bit of a good month last month and it's carried on, as I say, into February. And in this little video, I'm gonna show you what I've been doing, a few of the little changes that I've made to, uh, yeah, to put a few carp on the bank. So I'm gonna slip this one back, 30 pound 14 ounces. And uh, yeah, let's get chatting. So the start of this year has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, better than I could have ever expected and better than I've ever had before in, uh, in all my years of fishing. I, it's very hard to say what's made it so good. Uh, probably a culmination of quite a lot of things really. First of all, I'm in a bit of a, a more fortunate position now where I'm almost full-time, part-time if you like. I can pick and choose the days that I go fishing and we've had good bands of weather already in January, which again is another, you know, is another factor. The weather's been absolutely amazing. We've had some real strong winds, low pressure. And because I've been able to choose as and when I go fishing and sort of tailor make the sessions to suit the weather conditions, I think that's, you know, that's a massive advantage. Uh, the fact that I've changed a few little bits and pieces, whether they've made a massive difference or not, I don't know, but at the minute, I've got no reason to doubt that they've been working. And yes, I know, that the fish that I've caught have all been off of the same complex, but they've been from three different lakes on the complex. So if it was only one lake that I was catching from and not the others, then I'll maybe sort of start thinking, am I doing something wrong on the other lakes? But yeah, um, first week of February now, obviously I'm out on the bank again. Uh, the weather yesterday was amazing. Overnight and this morning has gone pretty diabolical, high pressure. Um, I'm over a hundred carp already for this year, which is like I say, better than I ever expected it to be. And as a lot of people who are watching this will know that I fish linear quite a lot and I've always wanted to catch a 40 off the complex. Now, back in September, I did that fishing on Manor Farm, which is over the other side of the road. I'm on Brazenose One now and I've watched the stock of fish growing here over the years, you know, and there's a lot of carp in here. And when you put sort of the stats together and you've got 1800 carp and only a handful of 40 pounders, the chances of catching a 40 is actually quite slim and yesterday I, uh, I hit the jackpot and I, and I caught one which for me is an absolutely amazing uh, a personal achievement for, for myself and I think it sort of you know caps off what's been a brilliant sort of four or five weeks fishing so yeah yesterday at uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon the right hander rips off and I had a 42 pound 10 ounce uh, mirror which is unbelievable. <laughs> How about that for a proper unit? I've tried for so many years to catch a big one out of B1. I've watched the stock grow, get bigger, other people catch 40s, and this time around it's my turn. 42 pounds, 10 ounces of Braze Nose One Mirror Carp just at the start of February. Absolutely over the moon. Okay, so as I've already mentioned, I'm, I'm sort of full-time, part-time. I'll keep referring back to that because I can go as and when I want, but I choose not to go a lot because I like being at home with my family and also I like doing the odd bit of work, which a lot of people say I don't work, but yeah, believe me, I do. Um, yeah, so the sessions this year, uh, last night uh, was my seventh night fishing this year and we're into the first week of February now. So five weeks, I've done seven nights, which me personally, I don't think that's a lot of fishing. Um, you know, if you was going every weekend and you was a weekend angler, you would have amassed more nights than what I already have. Um, but yeah, my sessions have, have mainly consisted of overnighters and two two-night sessions. So I started the year, uh, New Year's Day with a family, and on the 2nd of January I shot up to St John's. Um, more so because the lake had been closed for a while and I knew it was good for a few bites. I was on the gate early, uh, five o'clock in the morning I got on the gate, so I left my house at half past three, five o'clock first on the gate, made sure that I had first choice of peg, uh, done an overnighter on there and that's a 
that's a bit different to the other lakes, the, the other lakes that I've caught from. That's just solid bag fishing. So fishing for one bite at a time, it's quite a small lake. Anglers are sort of dent, like compact into one area. And if you're putting bait out, you're not really doing anything greatly different to the person next door. So solid bags. And that session started off, that was 10 fish, which was unbelievable in an overnight session. The second session, Hardwick is always renowned for doing decent winter hits. And there's one peg in particular, and I've never actually managed to get on it before. And as luck would have it, the, one of my friends was in the peg on the, uh, on the weekend. I was due up on the Sunday anyway. I was on the gate again, six o'clock in the morning. Managed to get in that peg, spent two nights in there and had 52 fish, which is, even I think, is, is incredible. And I don't know what I'd stepped in as extremely lucky to, to catch that many fish. But it is a good peg and fished right, it can produce the goods. So that was a two night session. That was 50 plus fish, um, three thirties in that, 30 in the previous session on St. John's. Then I went back onto St. John's for a night, uh, two weeks after, I had a couple of weeks off working. Um, then I went back onto St. John's, done an overnighter on there and had nine fish, I believe, out of there. Again, topped off by a 30 pounder, which again is incredible, but the weather was good. Um, and then, yeah, I had a session last week on B1, which is where I'm sat now, and had a decent hit of fish then. And the thing is with Brazenose One is, the, the, the chance of catching a winter 40 is very, very high from B1. The carp come out, they're big because they eat a lot of bait. And if you're here, there's every chance that you're going to stick your hook in one. And I just knew that coming back this week, not that I was going to catch a 40, because obviously you never know what you're going to catch or if you're going to catch, but coming back this week, I just, I just thought to myself that, you know, one of them big ones has got to come out and surely sooner or later, it's got to be me. So yeah, here we are seven nights into the year and, uh, well, as I keep saying, absolutely phenomenal. As I mentioned, there's a few little changes that I've made and one of them, not groundbreaking, is always prior to my sessions, I've done this, I've been doing this for a few years now, but what I'd normally do is put the boilies out and, and basically put them out in halves and quarters. Um, they're pre-washed out, so before I come fishing, 36 hours, 48 hours prior to coming fishing, a couple of kilos of boilies into a bucket, wash them out, put a bit of matching liquid in there. So for the, for the winter, I'll switch straight over to the manila and just leave it soaking, leave the lid on it and leave it soaking. But what I'd normally do is I'd normally just like, literally just break each boilie individually between my fingers into a bucket. So you've basically got like halves, quarters or what have you, and then add sweet corn straight to it. But this year, I think as fishing gets more and more popular, the banks are getting busier and everyone's putting out sort of larger food items, maybe like chopped boilies and stuff like that and putting a lot of it. I think when the fish are coming over it, they're not necessarily, they're not looking to fill themselves up, especially this time of year when it's freezing cold. They're just looking to be attracted into the area, graze, and they want easy food basically that they can digest and you know and pass through easily and come back for more. So what I've been doing is rather than just crushing them between my fingers, I've been mulching them up. So basically getting a handful of bait and proper giving it a good squeeze. And it almost goes to like a hard, um, like a heavy sort of ground bait type texture. And what that does is it goes straight down to the bottom of the lake and forms a bit of a carpet. And then literally adding straight to that a couple of cans of sweet corn. The sweet corn's in there, it's visual. It attracts carp from, if they're fish are swimming above it, it'll attract the carp down, draw them into the peg. And then I've got the carpet of boilie down there to, uh, yeah, to hopefully to get them grazing and get them going. So that's the bait. And then over the top, keeping it very, very simple. Um, I've stripped everything back and I've literally got a lead, a rig, or a length of line and a hook on the end. And I'm just fishing it D-rig style. Now you're not allowed to put maggots out in a spot up here, but you are allowed to use them as hook baits and in PVA bags. And anyone watching this will know how great a maggot or a natural bait is and none more so in the winter. So why not utilize that, put it on your hook bait and make your hook bait stand out. And that's exactly what I've been doing. And to be honest, uh, that is probably one of the one of the things that's made such a big difference is by just having that hook bait with the extra attraction with the maggots, still putting a pop-up on, even though it's on a D-rig, but putting enough maggots on top just to critically balance it. And I think a culmination of that sort of baiting that I'm doing and that rig has definitely played a massive part in it. So one thing that I've learned, certainly over this winter period, is that keeping it simple um, is you know, definitely, certainly the way forward. It's not that I didn't know that before, but it sort of sort of utilised it to me a, a bit more now that I walk around a lot of these lakes, well, not necessarily walk because I don't like walking, but I drive around a lot of these lakes, talk to a lot of anglers, and they've always got like the latest craze and the latest fancy rig. And, you know, it's not about having the best rig in the world because at the end of the day, all you're trying to do is put that rig out into the middle of the lake and ask a carp to pick it up. It's knowing 
why things work. You know, don't necessarily overcomplicate things, but know why the simple things work. And if you can get all of them little percentages together and put them into your fishing, I'm pretty sure that if you follow suit and sort of do what I've shown you or, you know, utilize this in your fishing, that it's definitely going to help you put carp on the bank.